Daddy Duras, and that great music you're hearing is the music of Fish. Now, Fish just played at the State Theater in downtown Kalamazoo this past June, and because they're such great guys, they took time out of their busy schedule to give us an interview. Now, if you're familiar with the music of Fish, you know these guys play straight from the heart. But now we're going to meet the guys themselves, find out more about the personalities that make up this great band. If you're not familiar with Fish, stick around, because we're also going to be checking out their first and thus far only video, Down With Disease, from their latest album, Hoist. So, enough said. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Fish. Big Daddy Do from Kalamazoo. And that brings us to here and now. And here now with me is the band themselves, Fish. We have Mike Gordon here, and by the way, I'll mention, I'm not going to say vocals for every one of them, because they kind of all sing like birds, so assume they all sing, too. We have Mike here, bassist, I'm partial to bassist, being one. Trey Anastasio, guitar. John Shirley Temple, greasy physique, Tubbs Fishman, something like that. Bird singer. <laughs> and Paige McConnell on the keyboards. Okay, thanks for making time out of your uh, hectic touring schedule for us, guys. And uh, speaking of, how's the tour going? Where we're on stage today? It's going real well. <laughs> yeah, we only have the one mic. I can pass it around. For but, yeah, we're about two and a half months or so into the tour and uh, having a grand time. A any grand time. Any particular show stand out uh, so far? Like maybe a hometown or best response or something? <laughs> I would think that the Kalamazoo show would definitely be the highlight of this the, will be the two highlight? and a half month tour. All right, Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Great. Great. Um, like, uh, which, which cuts off the new album? you guys think are, are having the most fun live? I like Axilla. Axilla. I was going to say Axilla would be my favorite. Axilla is our drummer's favorite song. <laughs> it's also the interviewer's favorite song. <laughs> I'd also like to say that Axilla is the drummer's favorite song. <laughs> okay. Um, now, you guys have like such a wide, you know, diverse style of music. I was wondering, when you guys were growing up, was this like... You know, for each of you, I guess, was this a common in your household? Your parents were really musical and opened you to a bunch of different uh, I don't know if any styles. of our parents were particularly musical, except maybe Pages were a bit. Um, but I know, that, I know that there was always some strange music around, as well as the Beatles. Beatles? My mother is a real big music fan. She played a lot of strange music in the house, as well as the Beatles. <laughs> My parents loathed the Beatles and all other music. I first started listening to the Beatles because my brother was a big Beatles fan, but uh, my dad was a big Dixieland jazz fan, so I grew up in the house with Dixieland jazz and the Beatles. It is. It's, it's not normal. It's, it's odd, but it's good. It's without meter, but it's timely. It's a music whose time has come. Thanks. We like to think of it as music of the 90s, Dixieland jazz. All right. The gay 90s. <laughs> or music without meter. Music without meter, of course. You guys are known for that. Uh, one thing that, that stuns me as a musician myself is how you guys can sing and play at the same time. Now, I mean, is this something that came natural for you, or did you have to really kind of woodshed some of these parts out? <laughs> Whoever had the hardest time, I guess. Um, I can't sing and play at the same time. That's... It's hard for a bass player because you have to syncopate doubly between the fingers and the voice. And uh, patterns weave inter amongst, inter amongst weaving of the patterns. So when you write, like, uh, like for example, way or uh, contact something, is that, do you keep that in mind, like, you know, the parts, you know, as you're writing it, or is it kind of like, oops, I have to sing over this? I've only really written a handful of songs. Mm -hmm. um, but way... Yeah, this is probably an, 
a conscious effort to make the bass line simple so that the vocals can be looser. Okay. Yeah. Trey does a lot of the singing. Yeah, I personally don't have a problem singing and playing at the same time, but a lot of that has to do with my role. Um, if I, I'm not in this, I'm not holding up the foundation of the song the way Mike is. So I think that for me, in writing a lot of the songs, it took me a, a few years to realize that it's hard to play the bass and sing at the same time. Um, we just did a gig uh, in Laguna Seca with Les Claypool from wow. Primus came up and jammed with us. And I was talking to him about that. And he too finds that you have to work at it. I find singing and playing at the same time difficult because of my role as well. <laughs> my closed role in particular, and sometimes my double stroke role. But mainly the role, I've gained a little weight on this tour. And I find that that role is what gets in my way most of the time. <clears throat> I've been singing and playing for a long time together. And uh, because of my role, I think that um, it's maybe not as hard as, say, the bass player or the drummer. Who have more roles. Who, uh, Mike's losing roles, Fish is gaining roles. <laughs> My roles pretty much did the same. <laughs> Paige is actually on a roll in the chess tournament, whipping <laughs> Fish's Oh, yeah? Butt. Chess players? Okay. He's on a roll. He's on, He's on a roll. <laughs> Now, the songwriting process, I see that, uh, that Trey, it looks like you write most of it, I guess, with uh, Tom Marshall, is that his name? Is he sort of uh, like Tom. an unofficial member of the band then, or no. the writing? No. <laughs> he no. is an uh, unofficial member. Well, sure. Any comparisons with Robert Hunter there, perhaps? He never listened to the dead. No. Uh, not at all. Didn't like them. Hated them, personally, for, for him. Okay. He listened to a lot of different kinds of music. I liked the dead. Uh, but uh, we went to school together. Uh, especially in the, uh, we started going in about fifth grade. Wow. We, used to, we used to write a lot of songs. Is that when Golgi was written? Uh, that was eighth grade. Okay. Maki yeah, Super yeah, Police yeah, Man yeah. was written in third grade okay. by Tom. <laughs> um, and it still holds true today. The, rele the lyrics are very relevant, I realize it was a <laughs> social commentary. But uh, yeah. Uh, a lot of the stuff we've been writing together. <laughs> hey. They're actually, the crew is working on a couple of songs of their own in the background. This particular song they're singing now is called Hey, Hey, Hey. Hey, hey. I think I've heard that one on the radio yes. recently. Uh, it's unbelievable. So when you, when you write some of these things, like some of the stuff that you do, the classical style with the piano and the, uh, and the guitar together, like Reba and such, is that all really meticulously written out, or do you kind of like everyone throws in their thing and these are the chords? And it, it swings. It swings from song to song. Anywhere from totally written out all the parts mm -hmm. to Reba, which you just brought up, was the thing where I wrote the line, if you're talking about that middle section. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and then each person, we actually sat down in groups of two, I think, Maybe myself and Paige first, or maybe myself and Mike. I played the line, and uh, Mike, br I think probably Mike first. Yeah. That way you've created harmony to go along with the mm -hmm. line, and then Paige comes in and does his thing. And then Fish adds a meaningless, a mindless, boring, simple drum beat to it so that people can snap their fingers and dance along to this strange music. Someone has to be mindless in this band. <laughs> I read in a bass player, Mike, you were saying that uh, you guys have this exercise sort of where one person like plays like a riff and then everyone has to sort of follow that and then someone else does it and you said it really helped the communication on stage. Yeah, there were a few different listening exercises that we did like that and uh, we haven't been doing it as much lately in, in practice, although it, it, it worked its way into our playing in a certain way. Exercises to make each person in the band listen to each other person rather than just... Pete Shaw. <laughs> and who's that? Pete Shaw's so you hear in the background. Yeah, he's oh, just, uh, oh, so we gotta give him Stage credit. Stage sound person. Background vocals.